Bruce Lawn. On on the song "Free Me," which, by the way, I'm, I'm I put up the lyrics right here, man, and it this record is insane. It's, I think that again, bro, you. I'm get, I'm telling you this stuff to your face so that so that you know how much I really enjoy the music. But some of these records, concept concept records, how emotional, how vividly you paint pictures. I've ranted about you for like 30 minutes on our Fan Love Friday stream in terms of just your ability to blend cadences, melodies, and vivid imagery in these in these lyrics. You see, you say naturally. I got to thinking. Who could I blame then? I looked over to my wife and told her it was over. She was in the way. And then you go on to say how she held you down. Is that what led to the to the the, the, the marriage issues? And and then you talk about posting it on social media. And it kind of sounds like you regretted posting it on social media as if you were celebrating it. Because I remember seeing that post and like, whoa. Um, talk about talk about that. Like what, what was transpired? Because I know you guys are in a much better place now, co-parenting. But what was the, the, the was that the, te- the financial tension and the burden that led to you guys splitting up? I mean, I think there are so many more factors. Um, there, There is a lot of truth to what I said on social media in terms of like spiritual leadership, manipulation and stuff like that is the foundation of my marriage. Um, uh, coercion, you know what I'm saying? While I was still just a teenager. Um, and even some of the stuff that I talked about in Free Me, like my dad putting me out the house and me not having a place to stay, you know what I'm saying? Like she gave me a place to stay mm. in a religious, in a religious house mm. with, you know, legalistic leaders that is seen as like sin. And in order for me to redeem myself, basically, I just need to go ahead and marry this woman. Mm. And, but for me, the alternative was sleeping on the street, you know what I'm saying? So like, I wanted to please God. I also wanted to avoid sleeping on the concrete, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I just eventually um, acquiesced. But what I'll say is that in spite of that foundational truth, she didn't deserve that. You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't deserve that type of explanation. She was a real solid friend to me. You know what I'm saying? And like she really held me down when I ain't have nothing. And I feel like the response to my post was like very heavy on the well done jay monty you know what i'm saying mm. like well done bro i'm proud of you like congratulations and that kind of haunted me because i was just like how where does that leave her you know what i'm saying mm. so like you know the truth the truth is that there was so much more to the story than just like i was forced into this and 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 now we're we're finally you're making a, a, de- a decision that's best for us and we're splitting up. There was so much more to it than that. And I wanted to elaborate on that story. As far as the finances go, like, you know, there was so, there were so many more layers, I think that stem from a marriage coming together like that mm-hmm. in the beginning. Um, but I would say that the finances and me feeling like the, the insecurities that developed in me, from feeling emasculated by not being able to provide for my family were definitely the driving force for me to be like, you know, let, let me, let me search for my masculinity by separating from this and blaming my, my wife at the time for my failure. Cause I, mm. I couldn't look at myself and say, this is your fault, Jay. Somebody, mm. somebody forced you into marriage, not, Hey, maybe you weren't, 25 and your brain was fully developed but you were smart and intelligent enough to say no you know what i'm saying you didn't have to do that you also didn't have to you know have sex and have a baby at a very young age and you didn't have like i never really looked at myself and was like jay this is your fault Mm -hmm. and so at the time i was just like it's her fault yeah it's got to be her fault got to be my pastor's fault it's got to be everybody else yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh but yeah, the finan- the finances, I think that was a that definitely was like a launching pad for my my insecurities, yeah. Yeah. And you go on to say you go on to say this, and I think bro, this is one of the most vulnerable things I, I think I may have heard anybody say in a song. And I I'm it's really interesting. You said I was screaming, free me from my marriage and free me from Sony. I was screaming, free me from my pastor. Swear something I think he can control. Swear sometimes I think he can control me. Then I realized God had paired me up with all these people just to see if he could grow me. Cause blaming everybody else was getting old. Time to leave that game alone. 
Um, and then you ent- you ultimately you, na- you name drop a bunch of people, which I'm not going to do. Uh, but then you you ultimately say that you were you needed to be free from yourself. I cut everybody off on my path to freedom just to find out the whole time I was the only one I needed to be free from. So talk about that revelation of responsibility that you got. Like here you are and you say you're, you're looking at all these situations and you're casting the blame on everybody. But then you get this massive epiphany, which I, it, it seems like was the turning point in you kind of re- bubbling up and, and, and the redemption of your story. And and is there a connection to that? And, and, and how did that feel getting that, that revelation that ultimately, even though everything is not your fault, a lot of this stuff is our responsibility as men, as leaders so on and so forth. I, I came to that point, man, when I, when there was nobody um, else around for me to put the blame on, and I started noticing the same outcomes, though. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like I was, that was a turning point for me. I was like, man, the same stuff that I was blaming my ex-wife for, like, still happening, though. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like the same stuff I was blaming my label for, like the inconsistencies and this kind of stuff, like it's still happening. And I was like, I was like, yo, this is me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mm-hmm. really me. It's, it's been, it's been me from the jump. And then like at that moment, and it was hard to accept and to build on that and to heal from that. But like at that moment, I was like free for real, you know? And then that's when I started, like, I started like really taking, taking, hold at everything in my destiny like my future i started getting way more organized i built a you know a business that went crazy and just like started taking control of my future you know what i'm saying and like not making no excuses you know yeah. and that i mean it, cha- it changed the game for me like i was able to fully find like everything i've done from that from that point forward from yeah. that moment of just taking responsibility you know what i'm saying yeah yeah it seems like you were hit with this hyper responsibility and then all of a sudden you emerged and i don't know the timeline on this but i watched you emerge from jay monty like the super artistic creative incredible artist to like jay monty is an entrepreneur like jay monty got his business right jay monty out here doing crazy merch drops like tying it into the testify series. You know, I remember me and you were on a, a clubhouse thing and you was talking about your return for Facebook ads and you know, this percentage. And I'm like, yo, like this man really, like you transformed yourself, bro. You know what I mean? And it was super inspiring to see you go and evolve beyond just being an artist, but to really becoming, you know, a, a, a entrepreneur in, in your own right. And you obviously as creatives were always entrepreneurial, but I mean, I was that was a, a massive boss up, bro. I was sitting there. I'm asking you questions, like, okay, like, you know, give me some game. It was it nah, was dope, nah. man. I definitely watched a few Ruslan YouTube videos on my way to establishing my business. Uh, oh man, I didn't know that. So. That's that's actually oh, yeah, really no, cool I, to hear. I, I, I definitely picked up some gems from you, bro, on the way, and some inspiration. <laughs> wow. Sure. So, so, yeah. okay. So, so, so the, the, re- the redemption of this story to me is that you, you took hyper responsibility for everything in your life. And, and with the power of God, you were able to turn it around. You know what I mean? Where, uh, you know, from my understanding, you, you're doing really well financially now, praise God. And when I hear these stories on here, man, like they're so heartbreaking. Um, there's a song on here about, you know, sleeping out your car, uh, this song, free me. Um, there's there's young artists watching this man and they, and they're they're defaulting to this like super duper artsy fartsy I'm just want to be an artist and never promote my music and never get my business acumen like what's some what's some just some game that that that, that you would give them in terms of um, not sometimes it's just a, a false dilemma between art and commerce sometimes it's a it's a false dilemma between ministry and commerce right because I'm doing it for God therefore I shouldn't make money or I sh- I, I shouldn't make the type of money I can make right. Um, mm-hmm. Can you just j- j- just speak into that? I think I do. I do think that there's a a, a conflict there um, of interest. A lot of people feel guilty making money, especially spiritual um, artists, um, Christian artists feel guilty making money. And I, I just think that that's just biblically inaccurate. If you Come really on. search the scriptures, you're going to see. Come on. Uh, that it's 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 a bit of a command and a commission for us to be financially astute and aggressive um, to be able to be effective in the, in the kingdom. So 
and I would say stop making excuses. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That you, you're riding everything on your talent alone, but mm. your talent isn't going to get you there. You're in a, you're, you're in a, in an incredibly over, oversaturated market with millions of other artists that are equally, if not more talented than you. And you'll never be heard if you don't set yourself apart from them through business acumen, through finances, through marketing dollars. And, and, and obviously you still need to be a, l- a little dope or at least dye your hair mm-hmm. or something to stand out. But, um, you know, yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, and, and again, guys, like really go listen to the album. Like, I'm not just saying that, like, go, go listen to the album because I think, um, one, I just think it cre- it's creatively excellent and I, and I can't, I can't speak to that enough, but two, um, the vulnerability, the viv- the, the imagery, the storytelling, the, the message of it, the ultimate message of where you land with free me. Kingstream entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Hey, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. You can check out one of the other videos related to this that'll be over here. Now I gotta tell you about a free training I have for anyone that is an entrepreneur, a creative, an artist, but maybe you are unsure on how to find your voice, how to find your niche. I have a free training in the description of this video. Check it out. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next video.